Catullus's bedspread is the life story of the Roman poet Catullus as told in his own words or through his poems. I wrote it because I think Catullus is one of the most interesting poets who ever lived. Um, I first read a handful of his poems when I was a schoolgirl of 17 and even then I was completely captivated by how one man could be such a hopeless romantic but also such a foul-mouthed critic of the people he disliked. I found myself piecing together his life story um, as he presents it in his poems. I was conscious throughout that very few people today can read Latin or have had an opportunity to study Roman history, so I wrote with that audience in mind. Um, I don't think that a lack of knowledge of Latin should close the door um, to reading Catullus's poetry. So I found myself translating all of Catullus's poems um, in a separate volume, which I called the poems of Catullus, and um, I've included trans some of these translations in the biography Catullus's Bedspread. And in that book, there are moments where I try and describe how sort of some of his Latin would have sounded, sort of what he was trying to put across. So, for example, one of his um, most famous lines is, "We should live, my Lesbia. We should love," which in Latin goes, "Vivamus, me Lesbia, at quiamus." It's very languid, all sort of runs together, and I said it sounded like a lover's drool. Lesbia was the name Catullus gave to the woman he fell in love with and immortalised in his poetry book. She was married, which made the whole situation very messy and very painful, um, but she also inspired some of Catullus' most poignant and beautiful poems. Later in their relationship, for example, he wrote Odi et Amo, the beginning of um, his most famous elegiac couplet, I hate and I love, Odia Tamu. Um, there he really captured more concisely and more powerfully than anyone before him, or anyone since, I think, um, the importance and the truth of, it, of a love-hate relationship. Catullus came from Verona, which was part of Gaul, um, at the time, I was probably born in around 82 BC, and um, but he moved to Rome probably in around 61 BC, and um, he also seems to have had a family villa of some kind on Sermio or Sermione, which is the most beautiful peninsula on Lake Garda. And if you go there today, you can visit somewhere which is called the Grotto of Catullus. It looks a bit grotto-like. Um, these are the remains of a slightly later Roman villa. His villa, I think, was built um, underneath um, the later construction and definitely he enjoyed the same exquisite view. He described Sermio as being um, an island, islet of islands, or almost like an island. And if you take a boat out onto Lake Garda, you can see exactly what he meant because um, it, looks, it doesn't look as though it's attached to, the, to Italy, to the land at all. It looks like it's sort of floating um, by itself. And it's a, sort of, it's a thermal bath resort, and he described the waves of Lake Garda laughing. And I think as he did so, he's probably referring to the thermal springs which lie beneath and sort of cause the, bubble, the bubbles to rise in the lakes, almost like they're expressing their pleasure through laughter. Catullus belonged to the equestrian um, stock, which is sort of the old-fashioned cavalry of the knights, really, um, almost like the Nouveau Riche. Um, his, his dad was friends with Julius Caesar. Um, certainly with that beautiful house in Sermio, he seems to have had quite a lot of money. But the interesting thing is that he was at pains to play down his wealth. Um, in one of his poems, quite amusingly, he says, he invites one of his friends around for dinner and he says, but only if, you can only come if you bring the dinner and all the entertainment with you because my own wallet's too full of cobwebs to accommodate you. So I think all his friends were a bit like that. I mean, one of them, for example, grows a little beard, which was quite out of the ordinary at the time. Um, usually the Romans who grew beards were those who were mourning or those who were accused of a crime. Um, but this wasn't a big shaggy beard his friend had. It was more like a beardette or a sort of face topiary. Uh, topiary, incidentally, was, was brand new at the end of the Republic. So I'm, I'm loath to call Catullus and his friends uh, hipsters or anything like that, but I think that had Catullus been around today, living in 21st century London, he'd sooner have lived in Shoreditch than he would in somewhere like Chelsea. My absolute favourite poem in the collection is the one I named the book after. Um, it's poem 64, 
which I like to call the bedspread poem because it has as its centrepiece a long description of the wedding bedspread, the decoration upon this bedspread that belonged to Peleus and Thetis, who were the parents of, um, who was to be Achilles, the formidable Greek warrior. And the bedspreads are drawn for all these beautiful myths of um, Ariadne and Theseus, the whole Minotaur myth. Um, and, and I think sort of when, I, when I read that poem, it's really important you remember that Catullus living, was living in some of the most uncertain times that Rome had ever known. This was sort of the, the last days of the Roman Republic, sort of hurtling towards dictatorship, which was the one thing the Romans really, really feared. So you have Julius Caesar and Pompey the Great and Crassus all trying to forge this alliance for power that's just doomed to failure. Um, Cicero sent off into exile. It's all, it's all very, very messy in the political scene. And I think Catullus isn't a political poet. He, he has all this sort of simmering around on his poetic consciousness while he's focusing on his own troubles. But in poems such as the Bedspread poem, he's really weighing up time. He's looking at, I mean, is time really getting worse? As he seems to think, or you know, were, was the heroic age that sort of formed the time period in which Homer was trying to capture in his great epics, the, Tro the Trojan War and everything happened in the heroic age, was that really as glorious as everyone thought it was?